Welcome to the other Discovery Show, the bonus show from the Podcast Discovery Show that's not about podcasts. We do not talk about podcasts on this one. We talk about all the other things that we've discovered throughout the week. I'm Kirk. And I am Zach. And I discovered something pretty interesting this week. We've seen a a lot of kind of political type discussion on statues here in the past six months in in the US. And I saw an Atlas Obscure article that was amazing and we had to talk about it. So the title of this article is The Museum Where Racist and Oppressive Statues Go to Die. So Germany found a way to preserve these things in a different way. So essentially this all started because they received a 400 pound church bell imprinted with a small but unmistakable swastika on it and so they had Hmm. to have this mental challenge essentially like should we put this up it's got it's got nazi paraphernalia on it Mm -hmm. and what they ended up doing was making a museum dedicated to specifically that type of of history and so they have things like nazi artifacts they have Military, like military Prussian rulers, statues of Aryan athletes and warriors, and they have the head of the sixty foot tall Vladimir Lenin statue that was decapitated, and <laughs> it weighs eight tons. It's gigantic, and it's there's a really amazing picture on this article. I should just link this in a chat right now so we can I was check this say out. We should, um, but basically, they have this entire thing. But it's not like any other museum you'll ever go to. So, what they say about it. Inside the museum, visitors confront at eye level statues and monuments that used to represent power. You can touch everything. Nothing is put on a pedestal. You can talk about what makes you mad. And basically, that that church bell is up there. You can literally... uh, they, They have all of these things that were once created to be these like revered things... And I can't think of one other museum that literally says, touch everything in here. We don't care. They want to take some of the power away from it. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, they want to take the power. And it's all like Vladimir Lenin's head. If you scroll down in this article, anybody who can see it, it's literally on its side, just like on the floor. Are you allowed to pee on it? I don't. Probably not that. That seems (laughs) unsanitary. I think that's a different different problem. But it was just a really interesting thing to see. And the Germans obviously have had to kind of process how to move forward with how they're going to act after having the history that they have, you know, and I, I always respected that about them. They have like, what did they call those? Did they call the stumbling, them stumbling, the stumbling, stumbling stones, stones stumbling or stumbling blocks? blocks or whatever I can't like remember. That. Yeah. They, they and have. I, yeah. That's go ahead. Yeah. They essentially have little monuments to the people who were killed in the Holocaust that look nothing more than just like raised stones because they just want to always remember the negative parts of their history to try and avoid it. And it was just interesting to see kind of their take on this because they have such an interesting perspective on all of this anyways. But um, a professor of global art history at Hamburg University um, essentially said, we need to de de heroize these monuments to take away the heroic appeal. This can be done by laying them down or placing them upside down. That way, everyone passing will be forced to engage with the monument in question. And then, essentially, you can just walk in there and touch whatever you want. You can see these things that were so important to history. Like, Lenin was like a a dictator of like a gigantic communist regime. And now Mm -hmm. his decapitated head that weighs eight tons, he built this enormous monument to himself. And it is now like laying on its side in this place and just, you can just like see it. And so they want to preserve the idea of it, but not like make it so that it could anyway be like glorified in there. So it's this weird mixture of things. Okay. So uh, kind of their last quote they have in this article is it's a great mistake to describe the monuments as history or heritage. We don't, we don't memorialize every piece of our histories. We pick and choose those men and women whose lives embodied values that we want our communities to share. And I just, honestly, just an awesome article. I was looking for 
something Atlas Obscura because I think everyone should check it out. It's just really and Gastro Obscura yeah, too. It's just a really, really great website. And yeah, that one just it was it was so close to home in a way because we've been having these same types of debates in America very often recently. And so it's just interesting to see um, an international take on it. I saw I, I thought it was kind of funny. I think it was just like a post on either Twitter or Reddit that there was a few of those statues uh, that were problematic and some people wanted to take down and they had been voted to stay up and these recent uh, hurricanes came through and knocked them down. <laughs> and so I thought that was pretty funny. It's nature, like, okay, <laughs> nature finds a way. Um, that was, that was great. Um, so did you see about Amazon's drones? No, I didn't see any so like, there was a, new information on them. I knew that yeah, they were so, working on this. Yeah, they've been working on it for years. They've been talking about it at least. But the FFA, the FFA, <laughs> the FAA, they I made a recent the decision. FFA. What did they, why are they involved? <laughs> Dang it. I knew, uh, um, Amazon is one big step closer to delivering packages by drone because the FAA just came out with uh, basically new orders for Amazon with guidelines and basically saying, clearing them for doing a lot of the things they want to do. And here's the the link. I just shared it on all the stuff. These drones are really interesting because they're not just the like helicopter drones. They have like a frame that goes around the propellers that also has aerodynamics so that when they are to the height they want to get at, then they tilt and they almost become like wings. Like they make it aerodynamic hmm. so that the they're more like a like a plane in a way. Uh, there's even a video on this. It's a pop science, uh, popular science article, and they talk about it. Uh, the the they can only carry up to five pounds, which doesn't seem like much, right? However, I didn't know it, but the five pound weight class actually represents between 75 and 90% of the packages that Amazon delivers. That would be, yeah, that's what I was, I was trying to think like, what would be more than five? You know, I mean, you can't get your weight equipment, you know, you can't have your, the drone bring your kettlebells, but other than that, the vast majority <laughs> of stuff you're getting, you're probably good. No liquids. And at first it's funny cause I was thinking, Oh, this is just going to be for like densely populated areas and stuff like that. Well, actually it's going to be the opposite. Uh, the F F A A. I think now I'm got in my own head. Uh, the F A A basically said it can't be used uh, in densely populated areas. It's got to be more rural type areas, like where we live. Hmm. Um, so we may get it before like New York. I mean, that sounds like a safe choice. It definitely sounds like yeah. a better idea to try it in our area versus New York City. Now, in the article, they do talk a lot about how there are still a lot of hurdles that have to be jumped through, but they're one step closer to being able to do it. Uh, and it is, it's, it's, it's exciting. I mean, that's oh, yeah. literally, it's something that is from like the Jetsons or something, you know, stuff being delivered by drone. Um, it's, it's really interesting. No, I, I'm glad you brought that one because it feels like mine is also a kind of a futuristic thing too. So then you combine that with our PDS this week and we have a lot of weird future stuff. But I will be honest in that I would love to order something from Amazon and get it like the same day delivered by a drone. Yeah, that they're sounds... saying within 30 minutes. That's what their plan is. So you order something and within 30 minutes it's at your doorstep. That's the the plan. I mean, so I'm slightly I'll read the concerned. Article. If everybody was on board on this, is there just drones all over the place? It's like birds. There's just <laughs> drones all over the sky. This is the vice president of Amazon. He said, we will continue to develop and, ref re and refine our technology to fully integrate delivery drones into the airspace and work closely with the FAA and other regula regulators around the world to realize our vision of 30-minute delivery. So, yeah, their plan is to be able to deliver things within 30 minutes of uh, you ordering them. Which would be amazing. Yeah, that would be amazing. I agree completely. But yeah, that'll be that will be something. It definitely is futuristic, and who knows what's. I'm sure there'll be some kind of weird thing that happens, but we're we're gonna just lean into it. We're gonna get our packages even faster. Waiting for two days is stupid, and we want it immediately. <laughs> so yeah, like Kirk said, we did receive 
a couple of calls that we'd like to uh to share with you um should we go discovery call first or second let's go you should want the movies Mm -hmm. let's go movie first and then let's go to our uh discovery hotline okay sounds good hello everyone it is giles here from the filmmakers podcast and um I'm going to give you a recommendation for a film. And I'd actually like to recommend a film by uh, Alejandro Montoya Marin, who made the film Monday. And he made this film for seven grand. And it was all part of the Robert Rodriguez, his film school. And this film, considering it was made for seven grand, is incredible. It is called Monday and it is so cool he's brought in all the aspects of sort of robert rodriguez's school how he could make those films and how he went about making it and with the behind the scenes of this movie is incredible i urge you check out monday by alejandro montoya marin so yeah those are the guys that are from the filmmakers podcast and giles wanted to recommend the movie and for anybody that doesn't know robert rodriguez when he first made I think his first one was just called El Mediachi. Uh, it was before Desperado. He actually kind of redid this movie, but he did it like shoestring. I thought he, I think he shot it on like film and he cut everything himself and like everything was as cheaply made as possible. And he now has a film school where he will teach other people how to do that same type of thing. So this guy apparently followed that idea and made a movie for seven thousand. And yeah, these guys are very familiar with films, so I'm going to have to check that one out. So special shout out to Filmmakers Podcast, Giles and Robbie, where it was amazing to talk to them. Yeah, if you have even the slightest interest in ever making a movie, making a film, or even learning about the what goes into doing that, this show is amazing, and you should definitely check it out, Filmmakers Podcast. And now for the more serious of the two calls. Um, so anybody who's been a long time listener will recognize Johnny. And it's probably been, oh, I can literally check. Um, it has been since April Ooh, that we have been, not heard from Johnny. We've been worried Where about him. Where has Johnny been? But Johnny's back. And he had some stuff they wanted to tell us, so we're gonna we're gonna play that one next. Hey boys, it's Johnny. Hey man, I'm so sorry that it's been a really long time since I've been able to give you a call. Oh, you would not believe what's been happening these past few months here. Oh man, I had the Rona, the Ro, Corona. You know what I'm saying? COVID nineteen. And uh, you know, I went to this doctor. There was like one of them all natural doctors, and they gave me all these essential oils. And man, it uh, it took a long time for me to heal. And then they told me that I had to isolate. So they sent me to this cabin up in the woods. And then when I came back, uh, well, my whole bank account was just empty. And I had been scammed. So it was a crazy mess. So I am uh, back home now and everything's going okay. Uh, but I just miss you guys, especially Zach. <laughs> you know how I feel about him. And uh, Kirk, you're okay too. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to, to hit you guys up and let you know if uh, I'm doing okay. Everything's fine and uh, I'm having a good time here. All right. You guys stay safe and, uh, uh, I hope to be back to my culinary tip of the week here soon. Peace out, boy. So yeah, thank you so much, uh, to, to Johnny. <laughs> Man, he missed you, Zach. I'm okay, but he missed you. <laughs> <laughs> I love how every time it's just, Hey, Kirk, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed you, Johnny. Missed yeah, you so much. We were we were worried. We were worried about Johnny because he uh and we we were just asked in chat, who is this person? He is a guy that He's calls he calls the disco hotline and he introduced himself to us there and only there. And so he lives there. Yeah, and he's been uh he sent us a few of his uh cooking ideas and that's why mm-hmm. he mentioned at the end of the the end of the call. Yeah, his, he was uh, doing culinary tips of the week. More of his culinary tips. Um so, so and, if that starts yeah. happening again, everyone's got uh, a lot to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if you want to call the Discovery Hotline, if you have a discovery or if you just want to say hi like Johnny likes to do, um 
give us a call. We've got the hotline number in the show notes. Give it a call. Leave a message. It's very simple. Um, and we will play it on the show. Coming up. What are you confused about, Twigs? Probably about who Johnny is. <laughs> oh, we're confused about that, too. We we have some theories as to who we think it is, but we're not 100% sure. We're pretty sure it's someone we know, but... It has to be. We don't know. I mean, he's he's a real-life That person is an actual that, person at some level. Yeah. I mean, why are you... Don't question his existence. Johnny is a is a real person. You're gonna hurt his feelings. Okay. So I found this very interesting article. It's pretty long, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing. It's a BBC article about the Pied Piper. Um, we all know the story of the Pied Piper, right? Like you know, right. there was all these rats in this town and the king or whatever is like, Hey, we've got all these rats. We need to get rid of them. And this guy's like, well, I can get rid of them. And he plays music, gets all the rats out, but then he like comes back and then he like steals all the children. It's real weird. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. It's a pretty dark one. It's a, it's a dark one, but apparently it's not just a fable. There's actually historical documentation that something happened uh, and it has a specific date as to when something happened in this town of Hamelin, uh, Germany. Um, And it talks about the children leaving. Uh, And it's it's a little bit disturbing because no one knows exactly what happened. And it's funny because they they show pictures and stuff about this little town and the town's now famous for the story because this is supposedly where it happened. And all the shops like have, you know, like rat uh, shaped pastries or, Hmm. or, you know, uh, music that they they even have like a dude uh, that would do like a tour of of the town dressed as the Pied Piper and probably plays music, I'm sure. Um, But it's it's. uh, it's a very interesting to see all the theories that scholars have had as to what might have happened. Um, one of the scholars says that they believe that maybe there was a kind of a famine and something like that, or, or, or something that everyone needed to migrate. So everyone migrated at one time and the people that were trying to get the people to move to a better place were dressed all nice and play music for people to follow them. So that's Mm -hmm. one of the theories. Um, Let's see what some of the other theories were. Yeah. So they said the Pied Piper played the role of a so-called locator or recruiter. They were responsible for organizing migrations to the East and were said to have worn colorful garments and played an instrument to attract the attention of possible settlers. So that's one of the ones, um, which is nice that that one makes sense uh, historically probably makes decent sense and it, it doesn't sound horrible like a bunch of the children being, there is that uh, it's not horrific taken away <laughs> um, and that's one of the more accepted ones let's see there was another one in here that was not as uh, cheery there's one of them talks about a lot of the youth being lost to the black plague, uh, which is horrible. Yeah. Uh, there's also one. Do you remember that we talked about a story about dancing mania? The thing where people would like dance uncontrollably mm-hmm. and like it was literally this thing. People were dying because they wouldn't stop dancing and it was like this weird thing. It was around that same time, so they were saying that this might be part of the hysteria and whatever that was going on at that time, because there was an outbreak nearby uh, for the same thing. But the article says they don't explain the very particular date cited for the loss of the children and the local sense of trauma, because apparently it's on a specific pagan holiday of like the solstice. So there is some very dark theories as to what may have happened to the children, 
in regards to that pagan holiday. Uh, so compared to the Pied Piper, the pagan holiday one is much, much worse. So, yeah. So basically, we know that the Pied Piper thing is somewhat rooted in history, but we don't know what the true story is, hmm. which I thought was fascinating. You know, it's I, I've always thought it was just a children's story. Completely just thought it was a children's story. Yeah. Even when I was young, I didn't think it was a real thing. Yeah, that is wild. And get ready for something else wild because I read an article about Neuralink. Have you read about this? Do you know what this is? That's the Elon Musk thing that he wants to do, this, right? This is Elon Musk's Fitbit for your brain. So this looks like a... Here, I'll, I'll post this in the chat as well. This looks like a little coin that has a bunch of tiny little wires that plug directly into your brain. And the point of it is to do a lot of things. So, okay, this has been in production for a long time. Basically, the idea is, at least the one of the, the potential things that they're looking at, there are many neurological problems that people experience, such as memory loss, depression, blindness, and seizures. And they're all a result of electrical signals on the brain firing improperly. And this could potentially fix that because this is something that is essentially able to plug directly into your brain and put electrical signals into your brain. So if we it were sounds, able to- It sounds great, Zach. Uh, what do I need to do to get this amazing device I it, want it right now. It just what keeps, do I need to do? It keeps going weirder and weirder. <laughs> so okay, it's because I'm looking a, at the article and it, I want to know. Yeah, it's the size of a coin, and then now they were originally going to have it behind your ear, but now they literally want it implanted in your skull. They're going to remove a piece <laughs> of your skull and put it <laughs> under your skin so that it's like flush with your head. You can charge it. With like, I think wireless charging, I'm assuming. I don't think they want people <laughs> plugging their head in like at night. Um, and then, yeah. So basically electrical threads are plugging directly into your brain. So for, and then this is another quote from the article. For many potential Neuralink users, undergoing brain surgery might make them uneasy. But the company is not just building the chip, but also a robot to install it. The robot will handle the most difficult aspects of the surgery, which Neuralink hopes will take under an hour and be done without general anesthesia. And then <sighs> comes the I next mean, part of it that's just ridiculous. <laughs> they have tested this on pigs. So for this whole thing, they brought out three pigs. They brought out one pig that had not had, it was just normal pig, just pig doing pig things. They brought out a second pig that had had the Neuralink, and then had it removed to show that even though that this was a once a cyborg pig, now it is back to being a normal happy pig. But then the third pig was currently a cyborg. And <laughs> it apparently was a little skittish because just it was being brought on stage. But other than that, it yeah, was Yeah, because it just had a, its brain drilled into. Not it's recent. Like, it wasn't. It didn't just happen, me. I don't think, did it? I don't think so. No, but it, it probably was generally wary of humans after that, to be fair. Like, that's that's a kind of intense thing to go through. But basically, it was still acting like a normal pig. And they also were able to literally, they could broadcast the brain waves of this pig to a TV because it's a cyborg pig. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It does sound really cool. Do I want one? Yes. Do I want to <laughs> get my head drilled? No. Uh, will I get my head drilled to have one? No. But it sounds cool. Uh, yeah, no, but here's the thing. It but I'm not going to have get, brain surgery for it. It starts to get real Black Mirror styles. So Elon Musk has even said some of these things. So some of the things that he sees is like a potential future for if this gets wide acceptance and advancement. You could play StarCraft via your mind. And that one day... People might even be able to save and replay memories, Black Mirror episode, potentially even download them into a new body, Altered Carbon. In the past, we've wondered in these if these chips would be vulnerable to hackers who could steal brain data. Literally, we're talking about hackers breaking into your brain. Like, I love how before it's even done, we're like worried about, dang it, people are going to hack this crap. They should be worried about that. People hack everything possible. People have hacked 
like Wi-Fi connected toasters just because they can. <laughs> so it's it's definitely something. That, and if it's plugged into my brain, I want it to be hack proof. Like if it needs to like yes, whatever whatever it has to be, no hacking allowed. I don't how know. Do you, how do you uh, keep your password from someone if it's you? <laughs> they steal it from your brain. <laughs> Do it from your brain. <laughs> Literally, you're reading it off of a thing that makes a different one every single time, and you still would have it in your brain. There's no way. Yeah. So it's safe. I'm trying to. Okay. What would it take? What benefit would it have to bring you for you to get a Neuralink? You already said it. I could play StarCraft with my mind. That's all it takes. You can play StarCraft without your mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, nothing. There, I don't think there's a thing that would make me do this. What if you no. could... Uh, no, I feel like it would be extra cybernetics to do that. What if you never I, forgot anything ever again? Like, okay. ever. Nothing. Okay. And also, Twigs, in general, possibly something it could work on. So, in chat, she said, if it takes away anxiety slash depression or helps with just general mood. It could do that. And once again, yeah, all of these things are Black Mirror episodes. Because if you start talking about like, oh, it, I'm only happy all the time. Isn't that a Black Mirror episode? I think it is. Where you can't be sad. I can't remember. I, I haven't seen all of them. It sounds like one. I remember the one where they had like the, like everyone had their own rating and stuff. And they had to like be super fake to try to get the ratings and stuff like that. That was a really good episode. Yeah, the one uh, I was thinking about when I said that earlier is there was one where everybody has contacts that record everything. And so there was oh, a couple yeah. that were like breaking up and they kept like rewinding and replaying everything and like using it in their argument. It was, Black Mirror's a good show, but it's literally too bleak. I think they even said this, like the world is too bleak for them to keep making episodes right now because it I is it is a bleak show in general. You're but yeah, no, it's an awesome idea. I'm freaked out by it. Just I actually there was a there was a guy that came on Shark Tank that had it was it wasn't quite this but it was similar and you would have to have a surgery and it would like it was like a Bluetooth slash you could listen to music and everything all the other things and the charger was like it it was a, a like a pick that would go into your ear <laughs> to where the thing that had been installed. And the sharks just lost their crap laughing at this dude, and they like la they like laughed him away. But uh, it was uh, it was a thing that people are people are trying to do stuff like this. Um, oh yeah, I mean you've got to have crazy and ridiculous ideas before something actually hits. I get that, and this is how uh, you know we move forward and do get stuff that maybe isn't as invasive. Because this this sounds amazing if it wasn't as invasive as it has to be to do this, right? I mean, if I could just have this even on my skin, that's that's cool. Uh, we, didn't we talk about like some sort of tattoos that would be able to tell you like your blood sugar and stuff like that before? Yeah, that's no, awesome. Yeah, no, and honestly, if they would just kept like the behind the ear one instead of like I have to get my skull chopped up, I would be more likely to do that. That's my problem. Definitely, that's my problem. Um, but yeah. Well, my last discovery this week i actually talked to a band this week for creators cove and so we will we'll end this one with a with a song but Sweet. thanks so much for listening to the podcast discovery show we really appreciate it we are on twitch we're on youtube we have a patreon where you can find all of our old episodes and we're going to be continually adding more stuff on there we have a facebook group we have a twitter if you google search the podcast discovery show you will probably find whatever avenue you want to go down we're probably on there so we'd love for you to get in touch we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to have you join a, a live stream sometime we live stream all of our episodes and we'd love to get to chat with you while we do it yeah for sure and we really appreciate you listening more than we can express uh it's a blast we really love making the show and we more than anything we really love meeting new friends that listen to the show and just kind of uh, love discovering stuff with you guys. So reach out, let us know, call a hotline, hit us up on Twitter, join the club. Let's become friends. Everyone needs a friend right now. All of those things. And speaking of hotlines, the, uh, the band this week is called Corey hotline. They're from Toronto, Canada, K 
Canada. And they spent a long time, 10 years or so, playing live shows. And so they were all very experienced, but they were a lot of times doing covers and they were playing a type of rock. And all of them got together and through just playing and trying to find what their sound would be, they came up with Corey Hotline, which is kind of this dance, funky, pop, just energy music that's really, really fun to listen to. And the song is called Work It Out. Work it out. Love you guys, and we will see you guys next week. Next Something week. Familiar in the Bye. way you look at me, but I can't say what it is, cause I don't know, but I look at you when I lose control. You move a little bit like me, that's something that I've never seen. So shake a leg and get it on If you know the words, then sing along Whoa, whoa